This is Tools of the Podcast Trade, where you can learn about the tools and resources you can use to start and grow your podcast. Tune in each week as we talk about the help you need to remove the mystery from podcasting so you can become a successful podcaster that can reach your audience where they are. Today I'm speaking with Peter Christian. Peter is the author of two Amazon best-selling business books. What about the vermin problem and influences and influencers? His books are geared to help businesses and individuals become more successful. Welcome, Peter. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Sure. I'm glad to have you. Before I start to talk about your experience and your work, could you tell us who is Peter Christian? Okay. Well, I am a retiree. Although a lot of people say that I'm too busy to be a retiree, but I left my consulting practice at the end of 2018, left Pennsylvania, Northeast Pennsylvania, and moved to Florida. I'm just north of Tampa and have lived here now for about three and a half years. I keep myself busy with writing both the books that you mentioned, articles that I published, uh, uh, twice a month, I do podcasts such as your own, and I'm also an adjunct uh, professor back in Pennsylvania teaching project management. In the meantime, I, you know, get fun in life too. I kayak and uh, go to concerts and have dinners. And uh, in the next month or so, I'll be uh, taking a uh, cruise up the Mississippi River. So uh, lots of stuff going on in my life right now. Oh, wow. Exciting life. You bring yes. new definition to... The term retirement. <laughs> yeah. I could, I don't know how I fit all that in with all that work and going on too. <laughs> okay. Well, that's wonderful. And I'm glad that you're keeping busy and I myself don't like the word retirement either. So yeah, I'm yeah. supposed to be retired. As well, but it doesn't mean yeah. you stop doing everything. It just means you do other things. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So you're a businessman by career and yeah. you've written books on businesses, what has been your number one lesson in, in business as well as life that has helped you to be more successful? I, if I had to pick one thing, I would say commitment. If you're going to do something, be committed to it. If you're not going to be committed to it and you have to do it, just because it has to get done, that's fine. But otherwise, the choices that we make and the paths that we take and the things that we decide we're going to do and how we're going to live our lives, we should be committed to them. If we're not, we need to reflect on what it is we really expect out of ourselves and out of others and set ourselves in that fashion. As a consultant, I work with a number of people and companies who said that they wanted to make changes, wanted to improve, but when it came right down to it, they weren't committed to doing what it took in order to make that happen. So that's just a lesson in the business side. But I see it, you know, in, in everyday life too, people who weren't committed to certain things and then wondering why they're floundering around in life and having a difficult time. So I'd say that would be the number one thing that I, I would say. I mean, there's plenty of other things we could talk about. That would be number one. Yes, thank you. It makes sense. I mean, if you're not going to be committed to whatever you set out to do, you're not going to be successful, right? Chances are good now, unless some <laughs> amazing thing happens, like you hit the lottery or something. But other than that, probably not. No. Got you. Okay. So what prompted you to write these books? What about the vermin problem? What yes. vermin problem? Okay. Well, that was number one. And that, that ha how that came about was both through my consulting life and my professional career working in businesses, some strange things would happen on the plus side and on the negative side. And I would say to coworkers or, you know, folks that were my partners in business or whatever, you know, someday that should go in a book, you know, just jokingly. And they go, yeah, you're right. And then when I retired, and I had the time to sit down and reflect on it. And I said, well, if I'm going to write that book that I kept telling everybody about, now's the time. So I did. I sat down and I picked 12 things that had gone on through my working career that I thought were very interesting. 
again, both on the positive and the negative side and had lessons involved to them, commitment being one of them. And I put the book together and then I found somebody locally who had done books herself and she worked with me to rough it out, you know, even it out, I should say it was rough and get it straight. And as we were working on it, she said, well, you know, nobody ever writes just one book. So she got me thinking about the second, but getting back to the first one, again, it's a collection of instances that happened during my working life about companies that did things very, very well or not so very, very well and paid a price because of it. In a couple of instances, the companies actually went out of business because of the choices that they made and, and the things that they didn't do, like being committed to, to making the improvements. And even though it's directed mostly towards business, because it's got business applications and, and experiences in there, there, again, it really goes back to life. As we were talking about just a couple of minutes ago, the choices that we make, the things that we do, the paths that we take all have ramifications to us and we really need to think about what we're doing and, and what we're committing ourselves to before we go ahead and do it. Then with the second book, <clears throat> thinking about it, I thought about my life and where I've gotten to and that it didn't just happen because of everything I did do or didn't do, but because of the people that I came across who helped me in a lot of instances, influenced me, gave me direction in some in some ways, shapes and forms actually helped me. Like I had a college professor who put me in for a bunch of scholarships I knew nothing about. And all of a sudden my senior year in college was paid for by the scholarships that I never applied for that my professor did on my behalf, you know, things like that. And I'm not saying that everybody will have that happen in their lives. There are people that are looking out for us, who care about us who are concerned, who want to help us when they see us stumbling around and, and maybe needing some guidance or people that we need to seek out in order to make those things happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and then on the other hand, there are some not so nice people in our lives that we come across who do, do not wish us for whatever reason, the best in life and be successful. And we have to, to deal with those folks, but we don't have to live with them and deal with them on a daily basis, only as need be. And we need to separate the two and obviously try to spend more time with the people who are there to help us and influence us positively and less time with the people who don't. But then there's also lessons from that, what you shouldn't wind up doing, you know, how you shouldn't treat people, how you should be there to, to help others when they need help and really ask for your help. Again, it was directed mostly, well, I didn't even say towards business because it had school instances in there and so forth. So it's got life lessons, but it impacts business as well. And if you look at the second one, the influences that we have and, and how we get shaped the way we are and think the way we are, that goes into the first one on the decisions that we make and certainly has an impact on that. So they, they do kind of tie together, although they weren't necessarily written that way. So uh, that's what the two books are all about. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Uh, yeah, sure. I also read, I'm talking about all your writings now. Ooh. I also read a little about your article on yeah. medium. Okay. What, what, what keeps, keeps you... you awake at night? Yes. What prompted that article? Well, the lady who told me I needed to write a second book. Mm -hmm. didn't tell me to write a third one, but sneakily, she said, you know, what I want you to do is I want you to write an article a month for the next year. Well, guess what? When you do something like that, at the end of a year, you kind of have a book together, believe it yeah. or not. So after about the first month or two, as I was writing, it suddenly dawned on me and I went back to her and said, you know, you got me writing a third book. But she kind of laughed knowingly like, yeah. But again, I needed a theme. and. What I sat and thought about was as I was a consultant and I would go into companies that I didn't know very well or, or knew a little bit about, and I was there in order to help them with some problem that they had. And in some cases they thought they knew, but in a lot of cases they didn't. So a great opening line was, to, as we were trying to find out about just what it was they needed, was 
So what is it that keeps you awake at night? What are the problems that really bother you that are so bad that you actually lose sleep over them? So I thought that was kind of an interesting title and a lead into, and there are so many things. There were so many things that happen in our lives, mostly on the negative side. When we have good things that happen, we don't try to stay awake at night celebrating them. We go to sleep <laughs> and we're, you know, we're kind of comfortable and, and, but when it bothers us, when there are things that are happening in our lives that need to be rectified, resolved, dealt with. They can keep us awake. And I, I had a couple of instances like that through business where my business was suffering at, at one point because of the economic conditions in the country, kind of like we went through with COVID, where a lot of businesses suffered because of that. Uh, so I started to think about things like that, and I've developed a series, and I actually am into the second year now. So I probably have two years worth of book if I wanted to publish another one about that with the main thing being what keeps you awake at night. And in a lot of cases, what I'm talking about is there's ways to deal with that stuff where it shouldn't be troublesome to you. Yes, you need to deal with it. Yes, you need to clean things up and move on. But quite honestly, there shouldn't be too many things in our lives that keep us awake at night that are that troublesome. If they are, we're not dealing with them properly and we need to. Whether it's getting more help, like I talked about in influences and influencers, or just meeting it head on and, and getting it resolved or whatever the case may be. So it's a positive thing that starts with something that's difficult that's happening to us and a positive thing about what we can do about it and, and to move on then. So we, we don't lose that precious sleep that we need. Yes. Good advice. So instead of laying awake, thinking about it during the day when you you have the time do something about it. You got it. Okay. That's yep. pretty cool. Thank you. Sure. <laughs> Very good advice. So wait, wait and say there may be another book coming out sometime in the future. <laughs> and you know what the title is already. What keeps yeah. you awake at night? <laughs> pretty cool. Okay. What is Peter grateful for today? Just things in general. Okay. I've had a very good life. In fact, I just got done writing an article called No Regrets. Uh, about my life and how things don't always turn out the way you think they are and things change and you may not be ready for that change, but you've got to deal with it. But, but all in all, I've had a pretty good life. I married a wonderful woman that I met in college. She's my best friend. She's my number one supporter. She's always been there for me. We've been met. We'll be married 44 years next month. Ooh, awesome. I mean, a lot of people cannot say that these mm -hmm. days, you know, <laughs> and I would say happily married for the most part. You know, there are days where we kind of don't talk to each other, but that's okay. We get over it. I have three great children that I'm very proud of who've given us, my wife and I, three great grandchildren who we're very proud of, who are all youngsters and growing up. I live in a beautiful place here in Florida. And I, I've done well financially, so we're not hurting for anything. We are not a, an Elon Musk wealthy, but, uh, you know, we have enough dollars that, that we can live a comfortable lifestyle. I had a great career. I worked with some wonderful people and have some very good friends from that. I have some good friends outside of work. And, you know, as we talked about with what is it that Peter's all about and doing, you can see that I'm very active. So I have my health. God given help and I'm able to do things and I do do things and I experience life. So I just have a lot to be grateful for. And yeah. I would say that's it is I, I, if I were to die tomorrow, no regrets, everything has worked out very, very well. And, and I'm a happy person. Awesome. And I appreciate you sharing all of that with us. Yeah. Sure. We, we need to be thankful for all the things that we can see. Sometimes, Absolutely. yeah, sometimes we look for things that, you know, are not obvious, but. Too you. often people deal on and dwell on the negative and they really mm -hmm. need to look at the positives in their life. Okay. Yes. There are some things that are going to happen to us that aren't the best and, and, you know, are going to cause some distress. You know, I've had a couple of good friends die in, in the recent year and that's, mm -hmm. you know, very sad for me because they, they, I've known them for a long time. But that's just the fact of life. So I appreciate more of the friends I still have who are alive and, 
and make sure that I let them know about it and, and try to do things with them and so forth. So, you know, yeah, so awesome. it's all how we approach things. Yeah, it's true. All right. So how can we get in touch with you? Okay. Three ways. Number one, I am on LinkedIn. So if you dial up Peter Christian, and it is a somewhat common name, so you'll find a bunch of Peter Christians. But if you look for the person who talks about being an author and a consultant and speaker, you'll probably find me. And if you've got a picture of my face, you can flash that. So that's number one. Number two, I have a website that talks about my books and also the articles that you mentioned, the What About What Keeps You Awake at Night series. And that's Pete, P E T E, forget about the R, Christian Books. That's all one word, Pete Christian Books.com is number two. And the third one is you can email me at PH, which are my first initials, PH christian and then the number 53 at gmail.com also okay. any one of those three you can send me a note let me know what you would like to talk about or what you think and we can go from there okay thank you we'll put those links in the show notes so do you offer coaching you to individuals if not need be absolutely okay. you know, more of mine has been on the business side with businesses Mm -hmm. uh, but invariably, when you're dealing with executives and managers and so forth, there's some personal stuff that happens as well. So uh, oh, absolutely, there can be some personal coaching involved, you know, about the okay. things that we talked about. All right. Commitment part, you know, what, what, what's keeping you awake at night and what can you <laughs> do to resolve it, right? Right. Yeah. That's a good, that's a good theme. I like that one. Yeah. As a, um, I can use that. I haven't patented it or copyrighted it or anything. So. Okay. Thank okay. you. I, okay. So I really appreciate you coming and speaking to me today and for, you know, giving some wisdom for our tools of the podcast trade audience. Now our audience are mostly podcasters. So I'm going to ask you one last question. Okay. You've held a lot of roles and you, you know, you've had, you have a vast business experience. What three tips can you give podcasters on how they can not only be better, be better podcasters, you've been a, a guest on several, I think. Mm -hmm. And so one, how they could be a better podcaster, but also how they could be better at running their business. Okay. From the podcast side, definitely interact with your guest. Okay. Even though you're bringing that person on board to talk about their experiences and that, you certainly have experiences also that can probably intermingle with that. And I think that really makes the audience more appreciative of what's going on and, and makes things a little bit more interesting. So mm -hmm. uh, certainly to do that. You know, but to get out from guests, the information that you want, that'll be helpful to your audience and, and that they would be interested in. And then including any and all of your own experiences as, as well, I think it is great. From the general business sense, commitment, we talked about that before, but to certainly be committed to it, which means you need to do all the right things, you know, when you're reaching out to people, make sure that they have all the information that they need in order to be there on time and to do the podcast and, and, you know, so that they don't have any difficulties and you're not kind of juking around trying to get things straightened out when you just want to sit down, do the podcast and be done with it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's number two. And number three is to get the word out about yourself. The more that you can publicize what you're doing, find out what the audience, potential audience is looking for, and then play to that. Okay. Because that'll make you successful. If you deal with some obscure topics that, yeah, you're going to find three people in the world that care about it. That's not what you're looking for. If you're trying to be successful at what you're doing, you're, you're trying to play to as many people as possible to find out what people need, what they're interested in, what they want to hear about. And then go and do that. Okay, thank you. Meet okay. your audience where they are, right? 
Absolutely. Yes. All right. Thank you, Peter Christian, for coming and talking to us today on Tools of the Podcast Trade. Okay. I always give my guests one parting shot. Okay. Final, final say. You are the master of your own success or failure. Mm. So you decide what you want to do, okay, how you want to do it, and then move ahead with it. And don't let anybody dissuade you from what you want to do, okay? At the end of the day, it's up to you. And I told that to my clients too. As much as I'm there to help them, at the end of the day, their success is up to them. Well, the same is true with you as individuals. So never forget that. And don't let anybody tell you any differently. Amen. Thank you. And thank you for being so generous with us today. Sure. I appreciate thank you for having you. me. It was great. Enjoyed being with you. Absolutely. Got questions about podcasting? Do you find yourself struggling with the tools and strategies that you know will help you launch and grow your show? Why not join the New West Podcasters Club where you can get your questions answered by me or one of our guest experts? The link to our next meeting is below. Sign up today and don't let confusion about podcasting stop you from owning your genius. Whether you're an individual or a nonprofit, the New West Podcasters Club is where podcasters come for answers. Link below for our next meeting.